Hello, everybody, and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around fancy Premier League. And this week, James, has been Correspondence Week. We are at number 20 of 20. You know what they say, save the best till last? That's exactly what I did. I'm not going to lie, it was part of the plan. <laughs> um, we are joined today by our new West Brom Itch Albion. I can't, should, I, should I just start that again? West Brom Itch Albion <laughs> Correspondents. Gemma at Gemma Baggies and her son, Harrison. How are you guys? Yeah, we're really good, thank yeah. you. I even speak yeah. in sync. Can, can we get to the most important question of all that all the listeners are waiting to hear? Harrison, how was the first couple of days at school? Um, yeah, it was good. It was fine. Is it uh, close to where your old school was? Um, not really. Well, New school is school, so... <laughs> it's, it's, it's good as school can be. Yeah. It's, it's okay. We'll just pretend mum's not listening. If you don't like it, just, just say that you don't, you don't really like it. Are you guys excited to be back in the Premier League? Um, yeah. Very, very excited and also slightly terrified. <laughs> um, I know we're, last, one of, we're the last podcast. Let's hope that we don't finish last no. in the league. <laughs> well... Last season, because of uh, obviously the Billich connection, then you had Julian Dix, my favourite ever West Ham player, as assistant manager. Then he took Grady as well. So yeah. I was hoping yeah. that there was part of me that was, look, I want West Brom to come up because of those connections. Yeah. And you made hard work of it at the end, let's not lie, but you got there in the end. Yeah, we, we limped over the line. It was very stressful. Yeah. And Bre Brentford won like 50 in a row or something. Yeah, <laughs> they were yeah, just yeah. relentless. Yeah, but not, not the ones that it mattered, particularly against no, Barnsley. So, yeah, so we, um, we lost on the front. And we always played before they did. Yeah. Um, so the pressure was on us. And then Brentford would always win their game. Um, and on the Friday night, we played Huddersfield and we lost. Um, and I just thought that was it. And I, I went to bed that night and I, I cried. I thought, I can't face the playoffs again after, you know, Villa last year. And I oh. thought, well, there's no way that we're going to get through the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and Brentford were playing Stoke the next day. And it was like an early kickoff. And I thought, Do you know what? I'm not even going to watch it because they're going to win. And, I'm, I'm, you know, try not to be bothered. And then my dad phoned me saying, they're losing. And I, was, I went, what? And they lost that one. And then you thought, oh, OK, then, you know. And then on that last day of the season, it was unbelievably stressful. And we went 1-0 down and you thought, oh, here we go again. And yeah. then we were 2-1 up. And then Callum Robinson missed this absolute sitter for 3-1. Yeah. Um, and then it was 2 all, And you just, you, I, I just thought, well, Brentford are going to win. They're going to win. They were playing Barnsley. Um, who luckily had so much to play for, because I think if they'd have played somebody else who were mid-table, I think, it's you bad. know, it would have been a different story. Um, but I just couldn't believe... And then they... Um, Barnsley scored right at the end, like, or almost into injury time, I think it was. And it was only yeah. then that I thought, oh, my gosh, we, we've done it. And yeah. it was then that you had that, that relief. Whereas earlier on, I was thinking, oh, gosh, why do I follow football? This is unbelievably <laughs> stressful. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the end, we were like, yes, we follow football. Like, the, the, the feeling, you know, it was just unbelievable. <laughs> so, would you, yeah. Was you watching, because you were playing QPR, was yeah. you just watching that or were you flicking between oh, the channels? No, I was just watching our game because I just I, thought, you know. Yeah, let me, let me tell you now, that was a good thing because if you'd have been flicking, that wouldn't have done your heart <laughs> any good. Uh, I know, and, they, yeah. and at one point, Sky, who were evil, went across to they Brentford yeah. and they showed, um, I think it was Watkins, um, missed, a, missed an absolute yeah. sitter because you thought, oh my gosh, they've scored and he missed. Um, and yeah, so it, yeah, it was stressful, but we, we got there in the end. You're here now. That's the yeah. most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, talk to us about FPL um, because yeah. with all the correspondents, you can tell that they all have a little bias towards their own team. Um, yeah. with, uh, with Andy, our Leeds correspondent, you can tell he wants three Leeds in there and he knows he shouldn't. <laughs> in your, have you put together a first draft and who are the West Bromwich players that have made it? Yeah, so I'm probably the opposite. So I always think if I put the Albion players in, I'll curse them and they won't right. do very well. This is so why we're going to get I, on, Gemma. <laughs> yeah, Back to James. I, I, I've normally got, you know, I'll have some Wolves players and, and maybe a Villa player. And if they do well, okay, great. If they flop, then, you know, it's a win-win. Whereas <laughs> if I put the Albion players in and they, I've lost out both ways and, you know, yeah. um, if I had to, if I had to pick two, I would pick Pereira. Um, and I would probably pick a Jay who I think is the only one at the back that is assured a start. 
Yeah. Is that why? Just purely on on guaranteed minutes in in your opinion? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are. I mean, there are a few that are. I think are guaranteed to start. Johnston being one of them. And then you've got Livermore and Sawyers who, you know, if they were 4.5, you could stick them in, but I think they're both five, so yeah. it's completely pointless. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Pereira. Um, and then you've probably got a J. I think he only missed three. But I know that we're also looking at signing a centre-back from Wigan. Um, is it? It's see, Keep Prey or something like that. Um, so, and he's right-footed, so he could potentially take a J's spot. So... It's all a bit up in the end. And the other so one... So he's not even locked you, necessarily. Yeah, you've got Bartley, um, who I think is 4.5. Um, and he played the majority of the games until after lockdown, then Hagazi was fit. And then Hagazi came in. And again, he's 4.5, but I couldn't tell you which one of those would start. And it's the same with the fullbacks as well. Brilliant, Gemma, because we all just went, thanks, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yeah. the I way that tell, yeah. sounds... I mean, a, a JE is, is 5 million. So with respect, yeah. I can't see any of us going and looking at him just because he's the most nailed. The familiar name yeah. to people will be Hagazi because he was very popular yeah. a few years yeah. ago when he, he scored in game yeah. week one. Then it was a clean sheet in game week two. Everybody yeah. wanted to buy him. It, all, yeah. it almost yeah. become, oh, I've got to get him. He's going up in price so quickly. I mean, I think but, with um, a JE, the, the one he, that, sorry, he, he no, would be on. one that I would keep an eye on because he scored five goals. And the season before that, when he was at Rotherham, he scored eight. And then the one before that. So he is great for that. Yeah. And if Albion, I don't think they will yeah. keep many clean sheets, he would be definitely one to keep an eye on. And the same with, I've seen quite a few teams on Twitter with Johnston in. Um, and he, there's been a lot of talk about the penalties and he saved half of the ones that he's faced. Um, but again, I don't, I don't think we're going to keep many clean sheets. And he's a great shot stopper. He'll get a lot of save points. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't be picking him personally. Yeah. That that will really appeal though, Gemma, because we had this two years ago with Neil Etheridge at Cardiff. Yeah. Who, I mean, they were shocking. But he made a few penalty saves. And did he finish like third or fourth highest scoring goalkeeper or something? Oh, okay. And yeah. it wasn't many clean sheets. I mean, if yeah. you hit, you, you can get, we've seen this before, goalkeepers concede five goals, save a penalty and get top bonus. We've yeah. seen that happen before. It certainly happened one game with Fabianski was at Swansea just before he joined Usage. So that's massive. If, if you if you save a penalty, you're getting more than what you get for the penalty. Yeah. So it's going to be bonus yeah. points as well. That's if you fair, nailed yeah. a clean sheet, you're looking at more. You and I are. think if you're if you're buying at the bottom budget there, goalkeeper, that's all right. You saying that he's better he's potentially a bit of a penalty specialist. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that's the one that just caught everybody's ears. And yeah. he's the one, the West Brom one defensively, which I if I was going to go in, it would yeah. definitely be him. The, yeah. the other one I did want to ask you guys about though was Dara O'Shea, who yeah. played about 16 times last mm -hmm. season, I believe, yeah. just been called up into the full Republic of Ireland yeah. squad. Is, mm -hmm. he, is he a likely starter at all? So what happened was we had um, well, Darnell Furlong started off as being our right back and he played most of them um, up until lockdown. And he's very attacking and he, I think he got second most crosses after Matt Phillips. Um, so he, you know, if he he's four point five. So if he was starting, then he would be a potential. But then um, O'Shea came in because um, Slav doesn't like to play both attacking fullbacks. Like he wants to keep one back. So O'Shea is by trade a centre back. But then he sounds plays like right your manager, back James. Back. Moving on. So, sounds like your manager, James. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> It's a shame with the defenders that uh, FPL Towers, they haven't left the 4.0 or a couple of 4.0 no. tempters in there because we're always looking for one and everybody likes to take yeah. a little gamble on a 4.0 that they think might get in, but everybody being 4.5 yeah. and yeah. above, unfortunately, is, is um, price them out a little bit when you've got the likes yeah. of Charlie Taylor and what have you at 4.5. Even what you said about yeah. the midfielders is so spot on. Livermore and Sawyers, if they were 4.5 million, oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they'd be they're, in. they're a conversation. They're yeah. not, unfortunately, no. at the price. They might they get are. a couple of goals as well, you know. They, they, I mean, Liver, Livermore's a card magnet, so I'd probably be going for Sawyer's. But, um, yeah, but they just there's no way you'd pick them for five. No. Mm -hmm. no. Um, you mentioned, I, mean, the, I was going to say, you mentioned the other player you mentioned was Pereira there. Um, mm -hmm. And if he translated his championship numbers into the Premier League at six yeah. million, yeah, we're yeah. all going to be over it. Um, do you think he can? I'll be interested in both of your takes. Harrison, what do you think? Why, why do you think you'll be able to do it in the Premier League from, from the Championship. What do you like about him? 
What do you like about Pereira? Well, he scored quite a lot of goals and the fact that he's had quite a lot of assists as well was very good. And I think he's just very good at just like, he's like very good at like, um, like passing the ball and stuff and he's able to get through quite a lot of players as well. Yeah. Able to twist their and he, ta- he takes notes of the corners. He twist their takes notes. Of- <laughs> <laughs> he takes I love it. The free kicks. He doesn't take penalties. Yeah. But I couldn't yeah. see why why he wouldn't. He I mean that with their shared out between Austin and um, Robson Carney. Um, but I mean, he's an, he's an, he's an, he's amazing. And if people haven't watched him play, I don't expect him to beat the Albion for long. I'm absolutely shocked that he's we've got him for I think eight million is just unbelievable he's worth so much more than that um he um like the passes that he puts through to people and is are just amazing and he, he he's also scored a few headed goals as well like he's he's just got everything like he's he's yeah he's amazing and for six million and especially with the news today that Dean Garner fingers crossed um, might be signing tomorrow that makes, yeah. that, ma- <laughs> that makes him even more attractive because the two of them link up quite a lot and that's probably who he'd be putting the assist through for. Um, I mean, we're absolutely desperate for a new striker and we've been linked with um, with Watkins, with Deeney. I know they've had um, um, a bid for Carl and Grant rejected. Um, and we've also been linked with Batshuayi as well from Chelsea on loan, which yeah. I can't see, but if like that did happen, that would be immense. I mean, that's the last, you know, the last bit that would need to be put in for Pereira to... It, it's all going to depend on the players around him. On, on Grady, you've probably now seen more of him than I, in a, in a uh, West Brom shirt than we have in a West Ham shirt. Just, yeah. I, I would have... Originally, I would have said, look, good job for getting him minutes last year and showing what he can do and uh, would have him back. Thank you very much. And now I'm saying, screw you for putting a bid in and trying to take him for £18 million. <laughs> but yeah, sorry. the reality is that... He's not going to get into our first team. Um, yeah. And 18 million, if you think Eze from uh, QPR has gone for 16 million, it's not mm-hmm. an unreasonable amount of money. And no. if he's going to go and he's going to get fir- first team football, uh, I, yeah. I don't think it's as, as bad a deal. There's a lot of West Ham fans are upset about it. And I can mm-hmm. understand yeah. because he's a homegrown talent and you want to see your exciting young players come through. Yeah. But I don't want to see him sit on our bench and maybe get five or ten starts next season no. that's not really fair either especially when he's gone gone away done what he's supposed to on loan and then come back mm-hmm. like that so yeah um, I mean he yeah. he I mean first half of the season he was just incredible um and then he got injured in December and he was out from December and all through January and I don't think we won a game without him we might have won one but the wow. difference was massive so I can see why they're desperate to get him back mm-hmm. um and then he after, you know, after lockdown, he looked a bit rusty to start with, but in those last few games, he was back to his absolute best again. You could see, you know, mm. the, he's, he's an absolute player. And he, yeah. he can go past two people, just embarrass them, and he's there, you know. You're making, just, me, change, you're making me want to keep him now. Sorry, I, see, I listened to a West Ham um, podcast rubbish. yesterday, <laughs> and, uh, and the, the thought, the feeling was that he doesn't want to leave, but the club want yeah, to accept the bid. Yeah, that. So... It's, it's, it's a case of if he doesn't want to agree terms and doesn't want to leave, then mm. we, we, he's not forced to go. But we'll watch yeah. this space. I mean, if he signs, he signs. Make yeah. advantage of it. I think he's five and a half million um, at the moment. For us mm-hmm. at five and a half million, he's definitely not an option. You guys, from what you're saying at, at five and a half million, if he's, if he's that much of an influence, um, then maybe he does become a, a consideration. If, Like you're saying, you didn't win many games without him. Mm. Yeah, we didn't. It was, it was, it was almost laughable in the end. It was like, well, we haven't got grades, so we're not going to win this one. Well. It was, wow, okay. and then it, 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 it was massive the difference. Um, but Pereira and 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 Dean Garner together, both of them, they're, you know, they're going to make a huge difference. We need them, and then we also need the the, the other third one of the trio back as well, Kravinovic, yeah. um, who looks like he might be coming back on loan, but he plays deeper. But um, he wouldn't be one that you'd be picking. But the three of them. We, we need them back. And also there's rumours that we might be getting Robinson back as well and a swap deal for Burke um, with Sheffield United. So getting all the gang back together. Because <laughs> at, at one point, you know, you, you, you start in the Premier League with this squad that's way lighter than it was at the end of the Championship. Because all the loans have gone back and you're thinking, oh my gosh, who, who's going to play? So, yeah, yeah hopefully 
we can get them all back together. Be- Beck's a really strange one because he was so highly rated. Yeah, he's our not, record not really signing. I know. Yeah. He, he went on loan to the Bundesliga before he joined you, I think. Then you yeah. got hold of him and it was quite a big deal. Yeah. It's just not really kicked on, actually. No, so, I, d- a I, don't, one. I don't quite understand what's going on there at all. The Ghana, just interesting looking at, at some of the, the numbers from last year. So same amount of goals as Pereira. Now, yeah. 10 less assists, but also 1,500 less minutes. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, I think prior to, and it's worth saying we, we're recording this on, on Thursday night, but I think by the time this goes out, the Ghana could well be a West Brom player. I think yeah. before, prior to today's news, I would be in a position and said, talk me into Pereira. Actually, it's possibly now a decision. Mm-hmm. Because Dean Garner, a little bit cheaper, is perfect as well. If they were the same price, mm-hmm. I think you go, yeah, I'll go Pereira. There's such a consistency there with the assists, plus Dean Garner being unproven um, at the top level. But it's now a conversation because actually, what what Dean Garner's doing there in minutes, he's basically getting an attacking return roughly sort of every 110 to 120 minutes or so. We know it's obviously it's a big step up, but those are good numbers. Mm-hmm. They are, yeah. yeah. He's he's definitely you know for five point five, he he. If he kind of does the same kind of thing, um, especially as now, because there's a, a short, very short distance between last season and this season. If he's as fit as he was, you know, at the end and he, he carries it on, yeah. then he should be at that level right from the beginning. Yeah, so. The other advantage for FPL, James, is obviously you're talking about price points. So he's five and a half million because there's Armstrong, St. Maximin and other yeah. players there. If you, if you wanted to take a risky punt on somebody at the start, and know that there's somewhere you can go to um, mm-hmm. if it doesn't work out for whatever reason. It, it makes him quite attractive. And I, it's almost becoming the Dean Garner loving show. But, but at the start, uh, just, the, just last week, ha- he's laid on three assists for Haller in preseason. And Haller was on the West Ham website saying how much he's enjoying playing with him and what have you. So, um, yeah, it's uh, heartbreaking a little bit if he does leave. But he, he, <laughs> yeah. It's really form. not, mate. It's not. <laughs> but it, it, feels, it feels more and more like, you know what, it, it, all you want is players to be, be able to get minutes and play well and you can't keep yeah. going. Yeah. So. yeah. And I know, I know that Fulham and Villa were sniffing around him as well, but you'd, you'd expect him to pick Albion after him being there. I Especially. think he's quite, a, he's quite a coup, guys. I think mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a big signing. I'm really surprised, Serge, that you're happy to let him go, genuinely. And uh, I, think, not, I know what you're I'm saying not about... I'm happy to, but I, I also I, feel... It's, it's I know more your fans like aren't emotional. happy to. Yeah, I know. They're not. But then... You, if you're going to keep him, we've got to play him. And are you going to play him ahead of Jared Bowen coming in? No, you haven't. Right? You've just seen that. We've speaking about it with Andy last night about Jack Harrison's been on loan from Man City to Leeds for three years. I didn't even know he was a Man City player. I just thought it was a Leeds yeah. player because he'd been there for three years. Yeah. It's it's different though. If you, I don't know. I, I just think um, if he's going to stay at West Ham, why would he stay if he's just going to stay on the bench? Go back on loan right. for a year. Yeah. If he's not quite ready for the team, I, I, to be honest, I think Gemma and Harrison would have taken him for another year's loan if that's what it took. Yeah. So it, I'm it surprised like... that it's a permanent deal. That's what yeah, I'm saying. I, I, I agree with you, but it doesn't seem that that's an option on the table, right? That's because you're I, like I desperate like... for the money in your pockets, aren't they? You yeah. can't help it. It's interesting. You've got to pay we're... for that shopping centre. They, they think, um, <laughs> the rumour is that, uh, I'd be interested in your guys' take on this, that we're going to spend the money straight away on the, the fellow from uh, Brentford. Is it Benarama? Because yeah. it's the same agent that's brokering the deal to West Brom for Dean Garner, who's going to use the money straight away to get Benarama in. Uh, and that is upsetting the fans a little bit. It's like, why would you swap like for like and just, just do the same? Good um, player though, mate, way. to be fair. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but it's, it doesn't seem, well, we need the defensive reinforcements to spend the money on another attacking midfielder. It doesn't seem to make sense. But we'll, we'll see how that unfolds. Uh, none of the front three. I mean, they've all played in the Premier League, though, particularly of interest, though, at the moment, from FPL point of view. Yeah. No, I mean, they're, you've got Robson Carnu and Austin, and you, you, I don't know, it's a toss of a coin, I think, who, who, who would start the games. And they're both, I think they're both 31. You know, Austin's legs are, are going, and, yeah, we desperately need a striker. Um, and Zahor, that didn't work out. Um, didn't really get a look in. He, he, he was eight million, I think, as well. Um, so yeah, we, we're desperate up front. Yeah, you do need something. Uh, by all accounts, there will be something. It's worth saying. So if somebody's thinking to to go with Robson Carney or Austin at the moment at five point five, I think you would you would leave that because yeah. West Brom yeah. are definitely looking to add. You've been linked with a number of players in on yeah. loan who can play the position. 
Deeney's yeah. a name we've heard mentions. He's a yeah. local boy, isn't he? He's a Birmingham lad and that. Oh, so I wouldn't I can, be surprised if we got him see, at all. I yeah. can see that, actually. I can, I can see it, yeah. I think from an FPL perspective, it probably, for me, would boil down to, to three players, essentially, which is the goalkeeper and the mm-hmm. two attacking midfielders that we spent so much time talking about. Pereira is a little diamond, mm-hmm. uh, as you already said. If you haven't yeah. seen him, you'll love him. He's, yeah. he's going to make, with respect, a lot of the Premier League listeners who will have seen you when you've been up before and used to the Pulis football and all that mm-hmm. yeah. are probably thinking, oh, West Brom again, yo-yo yeah. and all that. I've seen that Pereira. Times, yeah, West of course Brom you will. Again. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're a completely different the same. animal now. <laughs> <laughs> Pereira is going to make West Brom games fun. He's yeah. like, he's got, he, to be honest, you know what he reminds me of of his vision, Suj? His ba- he's, he's Ozil. Okay. He plays lovely reverse passes, always looking to play the ball in behind, link with pe- people. I think he's left footed as well, but he's yeah, got he the, the dribbling ability and a bit of pace and mm-hmm. the power in his shooting as well to go with it. As Gemma already said, he's on the free kicks. He'll score all type of goals. He has scored headed goals as well. I think to start with, I'd probably pay the extra. What's, what's your thoughts on that, guys? I think I would as well. I would. I mean, he, he's assured as well to start, I think, pretty much every game. Whereas with Dean Garner, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so sure. Um, he probably will start in the beginning, you know. Um, but Slab likes to rotate and at wingers and things like that, especially, especially if we're not doing very well. I mean, the fact that he played Callum Robinson up front in the last game of the season in the Championship that he'd never done before in such a massive game was such a gamble and it actually paid yeah. off and if he'd have scored that sitter he would have had two goals but he got on a goal and assist um, but yeah I'd be going for Pereira yeah for mm. six million definitely he's you know I think he's going to be a diamond I hope I don't curse him <laughs> Would he be in your team Harrison? Would he be in your team? Yeah he definitely would Yeah that's good enough for me. Go I, I'm going to have to give it a... If Harrison says, yeah, I'm going to have to give it a rethink. <laughs> I mean, eight goals and 16... Apparently 16, to si- 16 assists is the most in five years a midfielder has scored in the champ. Is that apparently. right? Uh, yeah. I'll t- I tell you the one, the one concerning and, that, one. and those aren't fantasy assists either. They're official assists. <laughs> That's true. There could be some more fantasy yeah. assists, couldn't there? Exactly. You know, winning, <laughs> winning free kicks and that you're, kind of thing, for sure. You're yeah. absolutely right. One number that is a little bit concerning is... He had a loan spell before you at Nuremberg in the Bundesliga and three goals in 19 games. Now, I, oh, obviously, wow. I haven't seen any of him in that period. And look, yeah. it's before he's come to you where he's obviously clicked and it's happening yeah. fine. Yeah. But that's at top level. Bundesliga is comparable to Premier League. Three goals in 19. That's, yeah. That would be the caution. But actually, mm. if I was to buy a six million midfielder, which I'm probably not likely to do, I, I think I'd take, I'd take a chance on him. Because mm, I yeah. think he's going to be a really unusual circumstance where unless you buy a forward who's going to get you 10 goals or so, it's going to be unusual that your best FPL player is going to be a midfielder. I can mm. genuinely see that as a possibility. And I think yeah. he's capable of getting towards the sort of 130, 140 points. I think it's possible if he hits it off. Yeah, I agree. And he's obviously, one, so. one of the things we're always looking for is talisman as well. And, uh, you know, Pereira is going to be the talisman um, yeah. at the BPS and, and controlling the game. James, you know, yeah. you're talking about Pereira putting in balls in behind and what have you. Another player whose name has been mentioned on quite a few Correspondent Week podcasts because he may go out on loan would be Brewster. But I don't know if he's the type of player that likes to get in behind and feed off that kind of service potentially. But you don't Yeah, I do actually. Him. It would be a good match, but I suppose we're not here to be able to move the chess pieces to, to try and make these no, loan deals happen. We need to but get in touch. <laughs> it would be interesting if um, if he made the move to West Brom. Yeah. And you ally that with what James is saying about the way you play, then suddenly I think, actually, you know what, there's a, there's a, a player there. And I feel like at West Brom, he'd be first choice as well, ahead of your, your yeah. dad's, I mean, dad's army front line. Yeah, because Slav only plays with one striker. So yeah. uh, one striker and then the wingers and then Pereira probably just behind. Um so, yeah, we, we need somebody just like him. Make a phone call. <laughs> call Klopp. Get, get Akin, uh, Akin Femmer on the phone. Call <laughs> Klopp and see if he can make the deal happen for you. You never know yeah. your luck. A forward is a, is, is a must. Are you, yeah. I know you said at the moment you're really kind of nervous about it. Is, is your expectation, it's probably the wrong word, do you think you'll stay up? Um, I think if you'd have asked me, 
last week, I think I would have said no, but I'm feeling more, I'm feeling more optimistic today. I can, I can see some things moving, you know, in, in the background. And um, I, I think we'll, I think we'll make 17th. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. You yeah, know what, I do. There's, there's an, a really interesting theme. I noticed this, Serge, um, on all the podcasts, actually. You can almost tell the ones we've recorded with who have recently had a new sign in and those who haven't. Oh, wow. Okay. In terms of optimism, optimism and positivity. Genuinely. Like, yeah. 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 Even think about Ricky this morning yeah. with his squeaky voice and stuff. Yeah. It's because he's just got Doherty through the door and stuff. He's happy. Yeah. Asked yeah. him two weeks ago. No. Speak to Sean now compared to when we spoke to him earlier in the week about Everton. Now he thinks he's getting Rodriguez, Allen and Decore. <laughs> yeah. He probably thinks they're going to finish top four. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, uh, do you know what? It's just an interesting little thing I noticed. And, and I think it's because of that. New mm. signings just generally across the cr- club sweep a little bit of joy and a bit of self-belief because it's that, it's that theme of something new. Whereas exactly what you've mentioned, Serge, whereas Twitter today has all been about getting gold and Sullivan out again, because yeah. you're a lot of like, well, we're selling our best young talent and we're not buying anyone yet. What's going yeah. on? So yeah. it's just, just an interesting little thing that uh, I picked up on. I think that the honest feeling, Jen, was I think you're going to sh- you struggle, unfortunately, both of you. I oh, really no. don't want to look at Harrison and say that. But <laughs> I, 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 can't, I, I can't see the goals in the team at the moment, and I'm not sure no. there's enough defence either. The biggest stat for me is, is the eight wins from the final 23 in the championship scares yeah. me. Scares yeah. me. And I think, what was it, even in the lockdown period, three wins, four draws and two defeats. Yeah, it's at championship level, that's mid-table form. Now, listen, yeah. if that's what you do in the Premier League, you'll finish mid-table in the Premier League, but you won't need me to tell you it's going to be a lot tougher. That yeah. said, the fixture list is all right, I think, actually. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. We've had worse, you know, starts and things like that. So, I mean, if you... I mean, we're playing Leicester on the first game, so my advice would be for everyone to have Vardy. I knew you were going to say that. it's an absolute <laughs> guarantee that he will score. But he doesn't have anybody to celebrate in front of because he's always right there, you know. Hand yeah. to ear, winding everybody up. Um, but yeah, definitely start with him. <laughs> what you don't know is I told Sir Geoff Camry you'd say that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. We talked about Vardy and West Brom. Yeah, uh, he yeah it's, it. it's, I think uh, James is right. And, and the, the, the problem is like, well, obviously we've talked to, to every single club now. I'm really impressed with the, the business that quite a few of the clubs are doing it that have been in anywhere between fifth and sixth and all the way down to 14th, 15th. Um, and, and they're another season on. Uh, the likes of Wolves and Leicester and Southampton and, and, and Everton and everybody are, are trying to improve themselves, which makes it even harder to, to break through. Um, yeah. I think West Ham are going to struggle next season just because we haven't bought anybody and reinforced them. It's what we like to do. But everybody else who's just a little bit ahead of us has progressed. We haven't. It just makes it's going to be a very tough league next year. Very, yeah, very tough. it is. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the last time Tottenham played West Brom away, and I didn't go, was before Pochettino was manager. Become a regular haunt for me because I tend to go to the Spurs away games that are not on the telly, and it yeah. always seemed to be West Brom away, always on a Saturday, and it was always one or two things, Gemma. It was always either freezing cold and windy. Which, because mm-hmm. I, I believe your ground is the highest at altitude or something in the UK yeah, that's or something. Correct. Yeah, it is, yeah. Or when we last played you, when you beat us just before you went down, it was roasting warm. Yeah. And you left the grass at about, it was about 12 inches long, this grass. So it's unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Ball, wouldn't, it, ball right. wouldn't even move. Yeah. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. Oh, that was such an amazing game when we scored right at the end. And we, you Place know, went crazy uh, yeah it, we, we were still hanging on um and southampton you know they did what they had to do in the end yeah. um but yeah well, that was an amazing game was was he it was more was in caretaker charge wasn't it was it darren he Moore? was yes yeah he Big was very unlucky when he got sacked wasn't he uh yeah he was we weren't expecting it at all it was a real shock um yeah it's it just came out of nowhere. And at the time you're thinking, well, who, who can do better? You know, um, he was really unlucky. Definitely. Happy with the manager now. Oh, we love him. We love him. We've met him, haven't we, Harrison? Yeah, um, yeah. Is there anyone you two haven't met? 
um <laughs> we've met most of them haven't we we've we, we yeah we the, the albin have been extremely extremely lovely to us yeah. um and if people don't know us they've never heard of us before um my husband passed away in december after a long um battle against bowel cancer um and the albion kind of picked up on this um and they've just done so much for us and in particular, Chris Brunt, who, you know, he's a FPL um, classic Ledge. player, you know, mm. yeah. And we can't just pick him now because, uh, unfortunately, he's he's left. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's he's just been amazing. And, um, you know, Harrison text, texts him sometimes now. Yeah. They're like best buds. Right. Um, but, yeah, we've just, you know, we've been to the training ground. We've met most of the players. Um, what, what other things have you done, Harrison? Um, our first, um, I can't favour anyone now because it happened to Jay Rodriguez yeah. who left and now Chris Brett now. Yeah, left, Harrison so. loved Jay Rodriguez, yeah. yeah. Had his oh. name on the back of his shirt, then he left. Yes. Then Brunt, now he's gone, mm. so he's not allowed a favourite. It's not for yeah. <laughs> Pick somebody else, please. Yeah. You like Grady, you, don't you? Because if you like him, then he's, he's not coming back. No, he doesn't like Grady, do you? <laughs> no. no. No, oh, I've <laughs> done you there, mate. Oh, come I, on. I, could, I could easy beat him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, we they've just been wonderful to us. So yeah, yeah. we're like, we're like a, the whole we're all of our being like a family, and I know all yeah. football clubs say that, but they really are. I think this community, guys, feels like you're part of their family as well. We all in a, yeah. a small way feel like. We know you. I was so pleased that you wanted to do this with you and the, the response to, to you saying you were happy to do it as well and to have yeah, Harrison with us is so good. Um, yeah. We've all followed yeah. your story and mm -hmm. we all think so much of both of you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very thank much. You. We appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've had so much support from, from Twitter and, you know, and, and people from the FPL and actually... Um, not last Christmas, the Christmas before, um, we had this big um, box arrive and we thought, well, we haven't ordered anything. We opened it up and it was loads of fancy Premier League stuff that had been sent from them. So oh, they'd wow. obviously seen some of my tweets. So Harrison's got a Premier League bag that he can now finally take to school because he hasn't been able to <laughs> nice. the last See, few years. they are nice. I nearly said a rude word there. They, <laughs> they are nice, aren't they? Have you, did you get a stress ball in there? Yeah, we got a stress oh, ball. We got oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, no. Got... I want a stress you know, ball. It's like if you get manager of the week or whatever, everybody gets a stress ball. And it's yeah, like, we, we got, I want to win FPL some... just for the stress ball. <laughs> we, nah. got pen, we got pens. We got a notebook with Fantasy Premier League on the front and, and all sorts. It was amazing. And it was so, yeah. Yeah. We were so surprised. Good to know. Can I tell yeah, you, so. when, when you said this big box turned up, I thought you was going to say, I don't know why, I thought you was going to say it was the mascot, the, the boiler <laughs> mascot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, oh, that would have been you know a bit of a shock as well, wouldn't it? That's what I, um, I was at the uh, the cup game where you beat us. Um, yeah. No, and uh, the, the boiler... You so had my, such I was a laugh my about son, this boiler. No, trust me, my, my son, <laughs> um, and I've got photographs of them on my phone. My son's only uh, seven at the time. The boiler and our mascot had a race at half time. <laughs> Trying to explain to him why your mascot was a boiler. So, yeah. I, I just couldn't explain to him. He can understand why Crystal Palace had got the Eagles and so on and so on. Yeah. Why have West Brom got a boiler as their <laughs> mascot? Fantastic. Yeah, well, we love the boiler. Yeah. yeah. At first I thought, a boiler, but yeah, now yeah. everyone just loves him. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, when it comes... We have to your boilers. Yeah. When it first come round the away end, so I'm, in, I'm in the away end at the Hawthorns and this yeah. thing come walking round and everybody looked at each other a bit weird like what's what that meant that? to be <laughs> yeah. and it's like the steward is like oh that's the boiler <laughs> what yeah yeah so we have baggy bird as our official mascot and then we've yes. got the boiler for yeah. ideal boilers yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, fingers crossed i'll tell you what uh, both that you get back inside uh, it's nice to hear that albion have been so, so good and, and the community yeah. as well fingers crossed you get back inside the stadium because Obviously, it's yeah. going to give your side that home advantage lift when when you can get behind the team as well, which definitely um, for you guys will make a big difference. I think it could be uh, the difference between say, getting 17th, 16th, or what have you mm -hmm. going down. But um, touch wood that we can get to that. Yeah, yeah, we because that that was the thing with being promoted and nobody was there to celebrate mm -hmm. and things that that hurt. But <laughs> um, yeah, it would be amazing when we are able to get back to the Hawthorns. Mm -hmm. One final thing before you go, Harrison, no pressure, but I expect at least 548th in the world in FPL this season because mummy's done it. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it was 580 seconds or something. Ah, oh, <laughs> was I, it. I was I, thinking about I, it actually. So it I've learned year. all this time. I should I should always have notes, shouldn't I? I just yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, any yeah, notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was the year where Harry Kane was five million. Do you remember that? I definitely and, do. Um, and I, um, lots of people had him, and they were benching him. And he was hurting them because he was scoring, you know, almost every other game or whatever. And so I had him in pretty much from the beginning and that kind of, you know, it was yeah. then and Chelsea, I think I had Diego Costa because Chelsea won the league that year and Giroud. But yeah, it's been all down here from there. I tell you what, so. when we finish this podcast, I've got a picture that I'm going to send you of Harry Kane scoring a goal from that season. And it's from, okay. behi it's from behind the goal at the Hawthorns. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, Kane against the Albion put him in always scores <laughs> noted <laughs> <laughs> no, guys thanks so much for joining us in, in uh, the final leg of Correspondence Week really good to get an insight into West Brom and let's see how many mm. listeners and followers of us are tempted into that West Brom attacking mid into yeah. their uh, into their FPL draft James we made it 20 podcasts in a week every Premier League covered I'm fascinated from all the listeners who's listened to all 20. Uh, if you know, then you know. Jump on Twitter, at PlanetFPLPod, at Sajan Shah. Uh, as James mentioned earlier, you can find Gemma at Gemma Baggies. Um, just let us know if you listen to all 20. Uh, the correspondents do it out of the love of FPL and the love of their clubs. Um, so giving them a little tweet and a pat on the back would be massively appreciated. What, what we need is well. like a tweet, a tweet that says, I listen to hashtag every correspondent week podcast or something like right. that that's what we need yeah <laughs> let's, let's do it um there we go james anything else to add uh no just a reminder Jim, where can the guys find you on twitter i'm sure everybody knows already but it'll be some people are not on twitter where can they find you on twitter i am uh, at Gemma baggies so if you want to follow me on twitter then please you know yeah give me that's a follow Brilliant. <laughs> stuff thank you so um, much guys for all the regular listeners, next week we are back to our regular schedule. On Monday, we'll be with a full podcast. We'll be going through the predictions that we've had for the Premier League from, from our, our correspondents, correspondents. For, again. <laughs> um, but we're looking at the, the, the highest FPL point scorers for their teams and the league standings and what have you. And we're, it'll be the final countdown to deadline, which is on the Saturday. It's game time, James. We're finally there. Final week's final tinkering. Ready to week. go. Right. I'm taking a weekend off to go through these correspondent predictions. See you nice. later. Enjoy. Um, as always, right now, guys, most importantly, stay safe. Ciao for now. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks, Harrison. Cue music, please, Thanks man. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thanks, guys.